Hey, welcome back to another episode of JRI. Before we get into it, as always, we're going to do the disclaimers, right? Not financial advice, forward-looking statements, and make sure to check YouTube notes for the full thing. I'm excited, though. Today, I've got John Miniotis of Abra Silver joining me for an update on their Diablos Silver Gold project. Just saw a very impressive updated uh, mineral resource estimate get released. Uh, I'll, I'll let I'll let John get into the details here in a second, but I mean, fundamentally, I mean, this is one of the good ones, right? Better ounces, better grade, better network, better prospects still that are outside the pitter resource, imminent PFS. Uh, and so, yeah, lots of very kind of positive aspects, both in the in the MRE and in, 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 up, in terms of upcoming catalysts as well. But John, I guess, yeah, thanks for coming on the show. How are you? Doing great. Thanks very much for having me back, Matt. Uh, much yeah. appreciated. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. So I wanted to, we were kind of chatting just before we got going here. You know, I, I know that people, you know, rather than just kind of summarizing the news release, I thought maybe we would try to get it to maybe, maybe a bit more nitty gritty sort of conversation. But why don't we just start, I mean, why don't you just tell us about the success that you found here, right? Talk, talk us through the MRE, talk us through its new findings it's, and, and what, you, what you're proud of, I guess. Sure. So, yeah, so, so at Diablilos, a couple of weeks ago now, we announced the updated resource estimate. And as you, as you mentioned, I mean, improvements across the board. So tonnage went up, but most importantly, silver grades went up significantly. They increased by about a third versus the resource estimate we announced last year. So in just 12 months time, our silver grades have gone up to now 90 grams per ton of silver and about 0.8 grams per ton of gold. And so the, the gold grade stayed more or less consistent. Uh, so we added over 40 million ounces of, of silver here in the ground uh, with, with the drilling we've done over the past year. And what's really important is that we've now added a, a high-grade second deposit uh, to this project, whereas in the past it was just one single large-scale deposit. Now we've added a second large-scale deposit, but it's much, much higher grade. Uh, so that's really going to improve the economics. And then, as you mentioned, there's still numerous opportunities here to, to continue to improve things with with drilling down the road but uh, as for now we're, we're extremely happy as to where we stand uh, we have a very robust project here and continue to de-risk that and move that forward mm -hmm. and i remember this is one of the in previous conversations i've asked you you know how when when you keep finding so much success of the drill bit what, how the heck do you ever stop drilling and, and move on to economic studies right and i see that's obviously a good problem to have but you do have so much so why don't we i mean just to, you know, getting into it here, I mean, adding ounces, right. you know, yeah, 36% increase in total contained silver. So that's 148 million ounces of silver. You're up to 1.36 million ounces of gold. So collectively, I think that's 258 silver equivalent. Uh, do you just want to, I mean, and I think you would reference maybe having some visuals here if this can help as well, but uh, sure. where, are, where are these ounces mostly coming from? So for this 36% yeah. increase, which regions are expanding the most at the moment? You can see that, all right? Huh? Yep, yeah, perfect, yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. No. So, so this 3D uh, really helps. Uh, this is obviously conceptual. Um, right now, what it looks like at surface is this. Uh, so, Kultos be behind this main hill here is where the the resource is. So, yeah, as you can see. So, this is sort of the, what the the conceptual pits will look like after we we've, we've mined out uh, sort of the the resources here. Uh, so, you can see the large scale Oculto deposit has been around for years and years and has had well over 100, 120,000 meters of drilling there. Uh, it's well defined, but importantly, there are still some very high grade pockets that, that we could infill drill and really expand that high grade resource. But we can talk about that later. Um, but for now, Kulto represents about 90% uh, percentage of the tonnage here. Uh, so most of the volume comes from Oculto. But you can see towards the southwest, uh, this new high-grade jack zone. Um, this is about 5 million tons at the moment, but much higher silver grades. So grading over 200 grams per ton of silver with uh, a little bit of gold. Uh, and so you would start off by mining jack as a standalone deposit. Uh, you would mine that, process that for about the first two years or so of the mine plan. And then, of course, you would mine out Oculto. And by the end of the mine plan, uh, the, the two deposits actually touch and, and connect, as you see here. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's where the, the vast majority of the resource stands. And then we have these other satellite deposits that, that we could talk to when we're talking more about future exploration upside. Uh, we think the system obviously continues to grow uh, beyond just these two pits here. 
Mm -hmm. And so this, I think this is a good, a good, good time to ask this. It was later on in my, my interview, but what is the, I mean, just for conversation's sake, for the sake of this conversation, what is the, the grade of Jack? Like it's a great starter pit. What is that overall grade? Yeah, it's, it's over 200 grams. Uh, in the appendix here, I'll scroll to some of these slides uh, just so everyone can, can visualize these. So Jack is about 5.3 million tons. In, it's all in the measure and indicated category, as you can see, very, very little in inferred. Um, so the overall grade is 202 grams of silver uh, with a little bit of gold. Uh, so it's 34 million ounces of silver. We just discovered this last year. And so we're very pleased. We spent $7 million uh, US drilling this over the last 12 months and added, as you can see, over 34 million ounces of silver in the ground there. Um, so excellent, excellent addition to, to the project here for sure. And so, I mean, like you say, Jack is brand new and this is what this is so exciting. It's already such a, a kind of a high powered project. I mean, there's still room to grow, I guess, rather than talking about kind of future exploration, is there known areas of mineralization right now that didn't make it into the pit shell of the MRE? And then maybe, well, yeah, let's just start there. Kind of what, what, what areas do you know okay. right now contain high grade silver and gold and, and aren't yet in the, in, the, in the project plan? Yeah. So, so all of Jack, all of the drilling we did at Jack uh, made it into, into the resource. And so, you know, uh, that was about 112 holes, I believe. I'll just go back to, to this uh, so you can visualize it. So, you know, uh, that, that's all of the drilling we did within this zone here uh, made it into the resource. And literally, it's all high grade. I mean, it's on average 200 grams, but there's very little variability uh, it's not like it's just a, a small section of that deposit is high grade. I mean, the, the entire deposit is is very high grade. Um, and same at Oculto. At Oculto, within Oculto, we have a high grade zone. That's in the measured category. That's what we call Tesoro. That's by far the, the highest grade portion. And that's about 12 million tons, I believe. And that's all in the measured category. Uh, so that's more than double the size of Jack, just the high grade zone at Oculto. Um, and of course, that that's made it into into the the pit as well. Now, what hasn't made it into the pit is beyond sort of the margins. I mean, we've done very little drilling, obviously, outside of of the main jack deposit, uh, but we have encountered some high grade silver intercepts just with the very limited drilling we've done just to the north of Jack, which is why we call it Jack North, and then slightly further away from Jack, we call this the Alpaca Zone. A uh, couple uh, drill holes we drilled there, uh, you know, some very good indications that the jack deposit could further expand out towards the, the north here. So that's a, a source of future upside potential. Yeah, excellent. And so I, I really like that not you know, not many of your ounces are actually inferred, right? They're kind of a wing and a prayer, not 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 applicable for an economic study. You have a vast majority M and I. Just for my sake and, and for yeah, for listeners' sake, do you just what what's the drill spacing required? You know, for your project, for your standards to get to inferred, and yeah. then from there to M and I, what what what's the drill spacing required? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I know for, for measured, so we even break it down between measured and indicated for measured, it's based on 25 meter spacing or less, uh, for indicated, I believe on average, we have maybe about 50 meters or so, uh, to, to the most, it would be 75 meters, uh, drill spacing. Um, and so yeah, within measured and indicated, it would be between 25 to, to 75 measured would be 25 on average. Uh, I think our indicated is actually about 50 meters on average. I think there's very little here uh, where, where we would have 75 meters or so. I think anything beyond 75 meters, like if you have two holes that are 80 meters apart, I mean, that that would be probably inferred. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, it's very, very little. I mean, we don't even really talk about the inferred at all. Uh, anytime mm -hmm. we quote the resource, we're only ever looking at the, the measure and indicated here. Yeah, which is yeah, high quality and, and high conviction, high confidence ounces, right? And so yeah. this is what I've never actually asked you this one. Do you have, you know, I mean, like, this is just maybe speaking to you, you know, John, uh, semi-informally, right? But do you have a, a silver equivalent number in, in terms of ounces that you, you, what's, you know, your internal target? Like, what do, you, what do you think this is capable of? When do you kind of flip that switch? At what, at what number do you flip the switch and officially go to a bankable feasibility? Yep. So no, great, great question, and I think we're we're already there. Honestly, I think now with the uh, the quality that Jack brings here, uh, with you know uh, at least two years of of mine life coming from Jack, I think that's going to pay back the vast majority of the capex here, if not the entire capex of this project. 
Uh, you can receive that payback with Jack. And then now Colto, of course, continues to be very, very large scale. I think we have a, a slide in here that shows you uh, the size and scale of this project relative to other silver mid-tier producers. So these are all million dollar plus uh, market cap companies. These are producing silvers, uh, silver uh, players out there, uh, large scale. Um, so you can see the, the quality and, and the, well, in here you see the size of this project mm -hmm. would absolutely move the needle and, and be a game changer for, for any one of these large mid-tier silver producers. Uh, we'll have our pre-feasibility study uh, announced here within the next two months. Uh, so by the, the early parts of, of February, we expect to be announcing our pre-feasibility study uh, that would show you how much production will be coming here. Uh, and so, yeah, th this is a large scale project. So as it is today, without any additional drilling, we could move this forward straight to a bankable feasibility study after the, the pre-fees is completed. And we could have that bankable feasibility study completed before the, the end of the year, 2024. Hmm. So in, in 12 months time from now, uh, with I think two to $3 million US, we could have a bankable feasibility study completed here. So that's one, one approach. Now, the other approach, of course, is yeah, again, with, with all these additional targets, mm -hmm. how many of them would be high grade, higher grade than a Quilto that you would mine up front? And so now that we've defined Jack, that's obviously moved the needle. We think Phantasma, Alpaca, Jack North, some of these other targets, again, could represent high grade starter uh, pits. Um, so in, you know, it, it would make sense, uh, obviously, to, to drill those out as well and then incorporate those into the bankable feasibility study. So in 2024, I mean, we still have some decisions to be made. How much, you know, uh, drilling would, would, uh, would we do here? Um, you know, given the size and, and economics of this, uh, we're, we're in a great position. We don't need to define any more ounces here to make this an economic project. It's already very economic very robust. I think that's going to be shown uh, in the, the upcoming pre -fees. Um, But yeah, could we do some more drilling to enhance this project? We, we believe so. Uh, and so that's a decision we'll make and announce, obviously, in, in, in the you know, early parts of 2024. Sure. And, and again, I kind of reference this. It's a good problem to have to keep kind of kicking your, your economic studies down the road because you keep adding high quality ounces. Uh, right now, though, and this is dating back from a the news release just this past fall, a couple months back, I didn't keep the date here, but you do, you know, you did declare sort of a phase four drilling intentions. Is that, do we, can we expect more exploration drilling before the, after PFS, before FS? I know you kind of just spoke to this, but just to, to yeah. for more clarity, see. Yeah. So, so that phase four, I mean, that would be the next phase, of course, of, of exploration. So when you look at when we started, so when myself, the career management team took over running this company, it was really in January of 2020. We completed phase one drilling, then phase two, and now we've completed, of course, phase three, which incorporates this jack zone. So of course, the, the next phase would be the fourth phase of exploration. Um, yeah, no size uh, has been determined yet. Uh, and so we're, we're still evaluating that. Uh, and again, given the size now that we've doubled the, <laughs> the resource here, I think we're we're at a, a size where we feel very confident. This is already highly highly profitable project that can move forward quickly, um, and so we would specifically be targeting for you know uh, these these higher grade uh, starter zones. And so with a, a bit more drilling here, uh, I think we could you know uh, likely uh, continue drilling phase four early next year, and then continue improving the the overall economics here even even further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have this this proof of concept that mid tiers or majors are going to be looking at with with with, with, well, with a great degree of confidence that there's more to be found here. And I guess maybe I'll, I'll ask you this, and I'll bounce back to to kind of my my scheduled questions. But yeah, I, I think there's been lots of conversation and a lot of retail investor interest in the in the potential kind of porphyry beneath Oculto and uh, and the kind of the, the the surprising copper hits you've got and. Yeah, yeah. I get it from 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 you know Abra Silver progressing a mine towards <laughs> M and A, going uh, suddenly just kind of like changing gears totally and 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 going after something completely different doesn't necessarily fit that game plan. But how do you? I mean, if there is some some giant lurking beneath Okul Tool that your deposit yeah. your current pit plan, how do you balance not kind of going off script and having to rebuild your entire kind of project? But how do you balance that with? demonstrating there actually is something down there worthy of attention and, and worthy of yeah. uh, further value. 
Yeah, no, another great question. I mean, we do have serious copper optionality here. That's much earlier stage. Um, but yeah, there, there's a couple different ways that you get copper optionality within within the company. And so aside from Ghibli, so I'll talk about the copper beneath the, beneath the system here. But aside from that, we do have another project. This is called La Coipita. This is in the copper belt of Argentina. So if you're looking for large scale porphyries here, I mean, this is where, where some of the best projects uh, sort of in the world are located with Filo del Sol to the north, Pascualama, of course, and then McEwen Mining, Los Azules, uh, which is our closest neighbor, I guess about 50, 60 kilometers uh, south, south of us. So we consolidated this massive land package here a couple of years ago, drilled a couple deep holes there, looking for this mega porphyry. Um, all of the holes hit mineralization between 200 to, to 700 meters uh, within just the, the couple, you know, initial drill holes that, that we drilled. Um, and so there's in clear indications here uh, that there's a large, large porphyry here uh, lurking um, somewhere in, in this land package. And so the grades here were about 0.2 to 0.4% copper equivalent, which is on the lower end of things. I mean, typically porphyries in this uh, part of the world range between 0.4, I would say, up to 0 0.6, 0 0.65. Um, and so here we're, we're in discussions. Uh, I think we've, we've you know, publicly mentioned this. I mean, it says on the slides as well. We're in discussions with uh, strategic partners that are interested in earning into this project. Uh, and so going forward, they would be funding uh, the drilling in order to maintain, in order to, to gain uh, an interest in this project. Uh, and so we would not need to spend any of our cash going forward. Uh, and we would maintain a minority interest in what we believe could be a billion ton sort of porphyry. So you're looking for a massive porphyry, uh, relatively lower grade, uh, but could be, you know, uh, worth the, our market cap or, or a lot more than that. Uh, you know, uh, given obviously the, the potential size and, and grades of these things. Um, so there's a, a mega, mega sort of copper porphyry. I think we have exposure to that. And obviously uh, advancing those discussions. And then, uh, of course, uh, if things materialize there, um, you know, we'll, we'll be announcing that. So that's one way for our investors to, to gain copper optionality. That's obviously the, the biggest copper potential that we have within the company. Um, and now there's also a couple other ways uh, within at, at Diablilos. So one of the ways that, which you just mentioned is immediately beneath uh, both Oculto and Jack. Uh, we've never drilled specifically targeting uh, sort of a, a porphyry, but as we've drilled through the oxide mineralization down into the upper portions uh, of, of the sulfide mineralization, we've encountered several very high grade intercepts. I mean, in Jack, the best one was 30 meters of over 3% copper. So phenomenal with, with a, a little bit of uh, gold and silver as well. And then beneath the high grade Tesoro zone at Oculto, we've uh, dozens of, of high grade intercepts, well over one, 2% copper. Uh, so there is copper mineralization here for sure. I mean, it's, it's clear we've, we've hit it dozens of, of occasions. Um, but yeah, again, it requires deeper pockets to be doing these uh, deeper drilling uh, in order to bring this all together in a resource. And so we're, we're saving, you know, this for, for down the road. When we have deeper pockets uh, with, with additional financing, uh, we could drill this off, clearly define a resource. Now, the thing is really, I mean, you're going to mine out the oxides first. Mm -hmm. We already have about a 20 year mine life uh, at between Jack and Oculto. Uh, 17 to, to 20 years, and, and that could obviously continue to grow. So it doesn't really make sense for us right today uh, to be doing deeper drilling, defining a resource that you're not going to mine for you know a couple decades uh, down the road. And so that's why we we have it. We know the potential is there. We obviously want to you know get a better sense of of the size and, and ultimately the the grades here. Um, and so you know uh, at the right time, well, again. With with additional drilling, uh, we we could uh, define a resource here, and that's something we we think could add value for the company for sure. Um, but then at Diablilos, if you look uh, aside, I mean at Oculto and uh, you know Jack, all of that's sort of focused towards the southern part of our land package. If you go five kilometers to the north, we almost have a an entirely separate project here, uh, which again we don't talk about because we we've never done any drilling here. But there's a series of outcropping porphyries. We call this sort of the, the porphyry complex to the north. Uh, you can see it in, in a bit more detail on the right-hand side here. 
There's a series of outcropping porphyries. There's been some historical drilling here that has encountered uh, gold and, and of course copper. Uh, so we think, look, if we were drilling for porphyries, you'd likely do it here because this is closer to surface. You could be mining uh, copper here, uh, you know, simultaneously. This is not located beneath uh, the current deposits. This is an entirely almost separate project. Uh, so there's, you know, uh, copper potential there. We've wanted to drill this for years, but again, we're looking to be very, very efficient on how we, we you know, spend our exploration dollars. Uh, and so, yeah, this, I think this would be higher priority uh, than, than drilling beneath, uh, beneath uh, Oculto. And it makes sense, right? I mean, you, you, you've mentioned a couple of times and you, you've had this very kind of telescoped, aggressive process of where, yeah, you, you're moving from a PA to now a PFS. And so your, your, your timelines have been extremely aggressive. So it does make sense. Yeah. Like you say, don't get distracted by other things when you already have such a successful project, but just, yeah, a lot of, a lot of exciting potential and, you know, people can't help but ask about it. Right. Um, yeah. Just so transitioning here, a couple of topics left here. So increasing grade, right. It always, always nice to see. And again, like without kind of the, the, the shenanigans that can go with inferred sometimes, right. That you have this increasing yeah. grade, Increasing cutoff from forty five gra- from thirty five to forty five grams silver equivalent, which again also great to see, right? So you've increased yep. your resource while increasing your cutoff. Do you want to just on that note? So higher cutoff grades. Uh, do you just want to discuss? Like, almost, I mean, I'm sure there'll be. What was the philosophy behind that discussion? What was your what kind of understandings of your project came out of the PEA that made you decide to change your cutoff grade? Yeah. Yeah, so, so we went to a more sophisticated approach, I would say. Uh, so in the past, historically, we've always used just a fixed cutoff grade, whereas in the past it was 35 grams per ton silver equivalent. Uh, so no matter where the mineralization is located on, in, within the deposits, uh, we were just using that 35 gram per ton cutoff. And I think a lot of junior, I mean, that, that is probably the, the normal approach. Uh, so it's not like we were being very aggressive. I mean, we were just using sort of standard convention there. Um, but yeah, as our modeling here has become much more sophisticated, I'd say over, over even the last 12 months, but certainly over the last two, three years, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, a radical, radical improvement there of our understanding of, of this system and of, of the modeling that, that we've been doing here. Um, now we're using sort of a, a net value per block approach. So we're looking where's the mineralization located? Is it, you know, 300 meters uh, down beneath uh, at, at Oculto. Uh, so it's quite quite far from surface. Um, and we're assigning specific values to, to every individual block here that we model. And so on average, now we're not just using, you know, I mean, on average now it equates to about a 45 gram per ton cutoff, but it, it varies. Uh, so in some cases, if it's very shallow, we're using a lower cutoff because it was, you know, uh, much closer to surface. Uh, easier to to mine and process, uh, and so even if you have lower grades, that becomes economic. As generally, as you get down deeper, using higher cutoffs, and so now on average, the overall cutoff is uh, forty five grams per ton, and so it's a much more sophisticated approach. As we're going to the pre fees, uh, we we thought you know it's a, it's a great time to be doing that, uh, and certainly as you get to the bankable fees, I think we'll 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 continue to to use this method. And, you know, it varies by deposit as well. At Jack, there's obviously higher recoveries, so you have to take that into consideration. Uh, and now the, the recoveries have improved uh, at Oculto as well. So you're, you're looking at, you know, your cost of mining, your recoveries, uh, you know, uh, the depth of mineralization, et cetera, uh, and assigning specific values and then declaring a resource. So this is much more conservative. I mean, generally, when you increase your cutoff grade, as we have here, um, you know, obviously the amount of, of uh, material, of contained metal uh, decreases. And so we're very proud that, look, even though we increased the cutoff grade quite, quite significantly, uh, the overall metal clearly increased. Obviously, the, the grades increased as well. Um, and so we're, we're very proud that this deposit clearly hangs together, even if you're using higher, more, more conservative sort of assumptions. Well, I think that's such a good example for me of why I like investing in, in development companies is that, you know, this, you, you obviously just demonstrated and displayed that you've, you've evolved from a conceptual model that, that, that this, a pit could exist to, to that higher level confidence of a mastery of how to, how to maximize your dollars and your value of that pit. And so, I mean, it's, it's something that as an investor, I think is, is critical to see and I, and I like it. Um, yeah, just, I mean, just a few minutes left here. You mentioned increased recoveries, right? So from your PEA yep. to your, or sorry, from your previous, from your PEA to now, 
uh, went from 73.5% to 826 for silver. You know, that that's the that's the big headline one, 86 to 86.5 for gold. I guess the question I have is, is, is uh, what did you do differently? Like, what did you add or change to the flow sheet? I mean, obviously, when you have a huge silver, high grade silver de- deposit like you have, adding 11% more just from recovery he has huge material impacts on, on, on your valuation, right? Wait, what, what did you do? What did you do to the flow sheet to get that to happen? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's certainly a material, material change. I think that's obviously going to be quantified when we announce the pre-fees. And so at a cool to a loan, as you mentioned, it's really the silver uh, recoveries. Gold, we're, we're still in line between on average 86%. Uh, so in, in the PA, there's no, no major differences there. Uh, but on the silver side, increasing from on average 73% uh, silver to now 83, 84% on average, uh, that's 10% more silver that you're mm-hmm. uh, getting revenue for. And so that amounts to another 12 million ounces or so um, that, that's going to be uh, in the, the mind plan of the, the pre fee study. So a couple major differences. I mean, in terms of flow sheet, we've added now a gravity uh, separation uh, circuit here right up front. And so this is very low cost. I mean, it's a no-brainer for the amount of additional metal that's being required here. So it's, you know, gravity separation is, is most commonly known as like the, the Nelson concentrators are, are probably the, the most, uh, you know, well-known across the industry. Uh, so something like that. So initially you, you crush now, uh, you grind it, and it goes straight to a Nelson uh, sort of separator. Uh, and with that, you you uh, some of the native silver here would be recovered, hmm. so you get about eight to nine percent silver recoveries uh, just from incorporating that gravity separation, and so that's the big difference. And so that's really helped drive the overall silver recoveries. A lot of jack is uh, in native silver, uh, and a lot of the the high grade portions of a are as well, and so that's really helped improve things. Uh, that also in addition, helps minimize the costs. So, you know, uh, you don't have to fine grind this. Uh, you don't have to, you know, do all this uh, sort of uh, cyanide tank leaching here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so as you skip steps, obviously, just putting it through a gravity separation circuit and then uh, recovering that through, uh, you know, you, you recover gold and silver dory bars, um, that, that minimizes costs as well. Uh, so a lot of tonnage can, can go through that and, and be recovered that way. But then also, again, the modeling has become much more sophisticated than it was uh, a couple years ago. And so we've now separated uh, Oculto within, I think, four different domains. And so there's various different geological domains within the high grade Tesoro zone that has a different recovery profile than, you know, when you're down deeper into primarily gold uh, mineralization. So whereas Oculto, the PA study, on average, we use 73.5% across the board. Again, we're now becoming much more sophisticated. Uh, and so we're assigning different recovery rates based on uh, the, the mineralogy here uh, within that same deposit. And so we've done that. And again, as a result, silver recoveries uh, have improved for, for the higher grade silver sections. And that's going to be reflected in, in the upcoming uh, pre fees. And then, so you mentioned, I think you've already kind of answered this, but yeah, Jack and Phantasma, just from June results, were in the 90s, right? And so it seemed like a market improvement from there. Is that just a more amenable mineralization? I think you mentioned that, right? The native silver, like you did, there's yes. no different, no, like the flow, th- flow sheet, pardon me, yes. is, is simple and easy, but it's the same one for Jack and Phantasma, just better mineralization. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because Jack has higher grades, you you get higher recoveries. And so sure. that that's uh yeah, but it's it's the exact same. So now everything would have a, a gravity and then a sort of a tank leach uh in terms of uh, processing. So it's yeah. it's all the same processing. Yeah, and nothing nothing bespoke or complicated, right? It's not refactored. It's right. super simple. It's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, Try so Try testing in true simple yeah. open pit, you know, cyanide mining. It's uh it's, it's quite straightforward. Yeah, you can't beat. That's the nice thing about for, you know gold and silver versus battery metals is it's just the min- min- the uh, metallurgy is so well understood, right? Yeah. So pit pit design transitioning. So maybe it's just a simple question, just again for the to frame this the next one. But how deep is it, and what's the current strip ratio for your for your main pit? Yeah. Uh, so Kulto goes down to about three hundred meters or so uh, beneath beneath surface. Um, Jack is uh, even shallower. So the mineralization at Jack st- starts at about 50, uh, 50 or 60 meters below surface and maybe goes down to, to 200 meters or so 
Uh, and that's obviously just the, the base of the oxides there is, is closer mm -hmm. to surface. Oculto goes down to about 300, maybe 320 or so meters uh, at, at the deepest point. Uh, for the strip ratio, we're, we're calculating that. I mean, it used to be 3.6 to 1 at Oculto. Um, now, at Jack, it's, it's the overall stripping costs, obviously, that matter. Uh, at Jack, it's free dig material. So whereas at Oculto, you have to drill and blast the, the, the waste, which costs about $3 per tonne. Now at Jack, the mining costs have actually come down because it's free dig material. Hmm. Uh, so there's no drill or blasting required. You're just literally digging uh, 50 meters of, of dirt, uh, moving that. Uh, and then now you're mining uh, the, the high grade mineralization at Jack. And so again, the, the strip ratios, et cetera, will be in the technical report, uh, will be in the, in the upcoming briefies. But your overall uh, stripping costs have, have for sure come down because now you're starting in this higher grade zone uh, that requires less expensive, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, mining costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, like I mean, it's, I think it's such a great example of how all these little details for Avro show is such an economic and powerful project, right? So, final question on pit design, the one I kind of wanted to ask you, and you kind of referenced it with with the Jack starter pit. Has it been optimized yet in terms of pushbacks for different stages, or is that still to come when the, with the PFS? That that will be incorporated in the pre-fees. We're finalizing that right now. I, the pre-fees is about 85% complete. So we're very, very advanced. I mean, you know, we'll be announcing it in a couple months. So that's uh, expected. Uh, so we've been working on that pre-fees behind the scenes for, for over six months now, for sure. Um, you know, we have a mind plan. It's sort of uh, running different scenarios, optimizing that. And then, you know, the final one, of course, will will get incorporated as a base case in, in the upcoming pre-fees in, in two months' time. Sure. Oh, thank you. And then I'll just have to look forward to that one too. I'll look forward to reading with that one. Um, last few questions, super simple. I mean, we talk about cheap exploration. Again, this is, you know, you're not drilling a kilometer deep, you know, or through 300 meters of cover, et cetera, et cetera, right? I mean, it's, I think you said 17 cents per ounce silver equivalent added. Obviously, that, that's a pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty nice number, yeah. right? And that's, you can see it's twice your, twice your costs from yeah. the previous two. So you're out of control, I say sarcastically, right? <laughs> nice, nice and cheap. I guess the question I have, I mean, what, you know, can you give us the industry average or what, what's, what's an industry average for a, you know, a product of your style or your type that, that you, we can use as a bellwether? Yeah. No, I, I really wish I knew. I mean, uh, so <laughs> unfortunately, most peers don't uh, announce that. And it's very, very difficult to calculate. So we've tried benchmarking that. I mean, there are a few peers that, that uh, you know, uh, announce that. Uh, certainly, we're, we're the lowest that, that we've seen out of the peers that announce that. And it could be difficult to calculate because if you have various exploration projects and you're drilling all over the place and then you're not updating the, the resource every year now, it's, you know, uh, how much did you spend? It, it's, you know, you can't really calculate that breakdown. So I think for investors, I mean, as a, you know, uh, investor looking to invest in exploration companies, that should be, I think, a, a key question. Uh, you should be asking all, all management teams. They should obviously know what it is. Uh, and, you know, uh, they, they should be uh, announcing what it is as well, just so disclosing that information. Uh, but we were not able to define that for the vast majority of our peers, I would say. And so for us, look, as we were infill drilling Oculto, it's very, very cheap. I mean, below 10 cents an ounce. Uh, now, as you step out, obviously, there's more drilling required, which is why the cost uh, per ounce uh, went up. But again, I think we're, we're industry leading uh, as far as we can tell. Um, it would be great to, to have a slide and show that across the board, but I, I just don't have that information. No, nope, fair. And, I'm, and it will be kind of a survivorship bias where only the companies proud of that number are going to be pronouncing it to the market anyway, right? So, um, yeah. Contributing factors, and this is kind of a gimme, right? I think it's the the answers are in the question itself. But what what is leading to this success? Because it is obviously a great, you know, it talk about like accretive value for for financings and dilution. This is a great example of of positive positive use of money. I mean, is it just the exceptional grade, strong geological understanding? Am I missing something? What what's contributing to this kind of very very cheap ounces on the board? Yeah. So for, for us, I think, look, there was already a lot of data available. So when we took over this project, uh, myself and especially Dave O'Connor, who's our chief geologist, and now the, the team that he has at, at site in Salta in Argentina, phenomenal, phenomenal geologist there. Uh, so they really looked at all the data, obviously really understood it. 
And for us, in this case, there was clear spaces that were underexplored. And so that high grade zone, even within the pit, it was, you know, there was a couple holes here historically that hit 10 grams plus of gold over, you know, 10 meters or so, uh, 20 meters even. Um, and then they were never followed up because I guess, you know, as this project has changed hands over the years or, you know, some of the, the predecessor companies ran out of cash, were unable uh, to, to drill there, at, you know, um, I think there was some very, very obvious targets. And so for us, we've been blessed. Look, we have a great team. Uh, the geologists are, are phenomenal. They really understood this deposit. And then as we've drilled it, I mean, it's far exceeded our initial expectations. We thought, look, within the pit, we could uh, do, do some drilling here, really boost this resource. But now that we have a regional understanding and you see that the mineralization continues far outside of the existing pits, and there's a series of pits here, I think, you know, that's uh, that's everybody's dream uh, on the, the exploration side. So we, we clearly have a phenomenal project here. And as we drill it, we, we gain better understanding. You know, I think we, we've been very prudent as well. As you mentioned, look, there's a number of targets. We could have 10 drill rigs going here, drilling deep, drilling up to the north, drilling copper porphyries. But we've decided let's be very focused. Let's always be mindful of dilution. Uh, what's going to generate the biggest value for your buck? Uh, let's drill those targets. And so we've been very selective. I mean, this could be a much bigger project than, you know, uh, I think uh, it will ultimately be a much bigger project than what we see today. But we're, you know, gradually getting there instead of just going crazy and drilling all these all these zones all at the same time. Yeah, and fair. I think that that focus approach is, is I think there's, there's, there's strong value to that. That's the end of my questions, John. I guess final thoughts to you? Perfect. No, I think I think that's it. Look, I think, uh, you know, uh, definitely very, very happy with the progress we've made. Um, thanks again for for having me back. I think we have a, a number of very important catalysts coming up. Uh, that pre is going to be key. Uh, and then with additional exploration targets next year, uh, look, I, we think uh, this project's going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to de-risk it as quickly and as uh, prudently as, as possible here. Uh, so a lot of upcoming catalysts. So yeah, uh, welcome. Uh, you know, uh, thanks for for having me on, and and I'd be happy to come back as we continue to to unlock value here. Yeah, excellent. And that's the feelings. Feelings are likewise. Feelings are mutual here. Thanks for coming on, and absolutely I look forward to getting you back on for the pre fees because that'll be a fun discussion too. John Miniotis, Aber Silver. Thank you for your time, and yeah, have a good day, and I'll see you in a couple months, maybe. Thanks very much. All right, see you.